using the 50-30-20 rule to budget. Hi there, it's Luigi, and welcome to Catapult Capitalism, your guide in making smart financial moves for your future. If you enjoy watching our videos, feel free to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you get updated whenever we upload a new video. In today's video, we're going to share with you the popular method in budgeting called the 50-30-20 rule. In case you haven't heard about this yet, then this video is for you. For those who are unfamiliar, the 50-30-20 budget plan is an American idea that aims to conserve money and budget it wisely. After taxes, your income should be distributed as follows. 50% for necessities, 30% for desires, and 20% for debt repayment or emergency savings. The 50-30-20 rule was popularized by Senator Elizabeth Warren and her daughter Amelia Warren Tiagi. It was created as a basic guideline for working-class families to use when budgeting for the future and unanticipated occurrences. The 50-30-20 rule, sometimes known as the 50-20-30 rule, is a budgeting approach that can help you keep your expenditure in line with your savings objectives. Budgets should be about more than just paying your bills on time. The appropriate budget can help you select how much to set aside and on what you should spend your money. The 50-30-20 rule may be an excellent tool for diversifying your financial profile, achieving dynamic savings objectives, and fostering overall financial wellness. Now let's dig deeper into this budgeting plan. Essentials 50% of your income Set aside no more than half of your salary for the fundamental requirements in your life to begin following this guideline. This may appear to be a large number, and it is at 50%, but when you examine everything that fits under this group, it begins to make more sense. This will include your monthly living expenditures, which are necessary expenses that you will almost likely have to pay regardless of where you reside, where you work, or what your future aspirations are. Essentials can include your housing, food, transportation costs, and utility bills. The percentage allows you to adjust while keeping a healthy, balanced budget. Remember that the total cost is more important than individual charges. For example, some individuals live in high-rent regions but can walk to work, whilst others have much lower housing expenses but must pay considerably more for transportation. The cost of your essentials will vary based on where you reside and your lifestyle. Whether you're considering migrating to a different region of the country, you should first evaluate your cost of living to see if you can actually afford to live in that location, based on your current total salary. Wants 30% of your income The second category and the one that might have the most impact on your budget is unneeded spending that improves your living. Some financial experts regard this category as entirely optional, but in modern culture, many of these so-called luxuries have taken on a more necessary role. It all comes down to what you want out of life and what you're ready to give up. Only you can determine which of your costs are personal and which are actually necessary. Similar to how no more than 50% of your money should go towards necessities, 30% is the maximum amount you should spend on personal preferences. The fewer fees you have in this area, the faster you'll be able to pay off your debt and secure your future. Savings 20% of your income what you do in this stage is to set aside 20% of your take-home earnings for savings. This is simply how much you should set away from your income for savings each month. All of these are things you should do, but they won't endanger your life or leave you homeless if you don't. This category of costs should only be paid after your necessities have been met. Consider this your get-ahead area, where you can set a savings goal for yourself. Whereas essentials should consume 50% or less of your income, obligations should consume 20% or more. By allocating as much of your money as possible to this area, you'll be able to pay off your debt faster and make greater advances toward a stress-free future. 
The phrase retirement may not convey a feeling of urgency when you're just 24 years old, but it will undoubtedly grow more important in the coming decades. Just bear in mind that the longer you let this money grow, the more interest you'll receive through compounding. The more you save today, the sooner you'll be able to pay off your debt and reach financial security. The 50-30-20 rule seems so surreal, but where do we start? Here are some tips that you can take note of when starting your 50-30-20 journey. Calculate your monthly revenue. Total the amount you get in your bank account each month. Find out how much is deducted from your take-home pay if you have a company retirement plan and add that amount back in. If you pay estimated taxes, deduct the amount from your monthly income. Determine a budget limit for each category. To determine how much you should spend in each area, multiply your take-home income by 0.50 for necessities, 0.30 for desires, and 0.20 for financial objectives. Consider these three categories to be buckets that can be filled with monthly costs. List and total your monthly costs by category and determine if you're spending less than the monthly objectives you established in the previous phase. Stick to your budget. Track your monthly costs and make modifications as needed to stay inside your spending limits in the future. Does this method actually work? Yes! Organizing your money may be difficult, and it's frequently difficult to know where to begin. That's why the 50-30-20 rule of thumb works so well. It's a simple method to get control of something that may otherwise be scary. If you don't go so far as to measure how well you keep to these goals, it's still an excellent method to gauge your financial health. Identifying why you're using the 50-30-20 budgeting strategy will help you stay motivated and establish a better plan to attain your objective. It's similar to keeping focus and having your eyes on the prize. If you're tempted to overspend, snap yourself back to your senses by remembering your goals, your aims, and why you're doing this in the first place. Ask yourself, why am I beginning to budget? What do I want to accomplish? Only after you've reviewed your income and spending and determined what's necessary and what's not, can you build a budget that will help you make the most out of your money. Years from now, you can still use the same ideas to help your budget change along with your life. A quick disclaimer though, please do not interpret this rule in a very literal manner. The proportions may have worked for a bunch of people, yet your life is still unique. Everybody has different circumstances. This strategy serves as a framework within which you may operate. A budgeting technique that works for you is determined by a number of circumstances. There is no one-size-fits-all approach to budgeting and saving money. That being stated, the 50-30-20 rule is a simple yet efficient way to get started on your financial journey. But of course, if you're barely making ends meet, you may find it difficult to save 20% of your salary regardless of how you live, especially if you're supporting a family. But don't worry, there are still other ways to manage and budget your money that is relative to your situation. And that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification icon so you can be notified whenever we upload new videos. Thank you so much for watching Catapult Capitalism, and we'll see you later.